Hey guys, Albe here again with my BMW F800GS. As you guys can see, the garage is coming along, so I have a little bit more space. And in this episode, we're gonna take care of the front sprocket. We're gonna install a 15 teeth front sprocket, and we're gonna see if it does really make a difference. And if it does, how much of a difference it really makes. But enough with the chit chat, let's get on it. How am I gonna find out if uh, dropping down one tooth is gonna make a difference? Well, I went out uh, and with the stock sprocket, which is a 16 teeth, I took some measurements. Uh, I used as a reference RPM 5000 and I saw what speed I can achieve on each gear at 5000 RPM. On top of that, I did a 0 to 60 where I would shift at 5000 RPM, so it is not quite a representative of what the bike can do 0 to 60. I just need a reference point to see if the bike is faster with a short to, with a smaller front sprocket, which it should be, but the question is by how much. Now that I have some data over here marked down, let's install the sprocket and then I'm gonna go out, do it all over again and see if it really makes that much of a difference. First step in changing the sprocket is obviously taking care of removing this, the sprocket cover. So that's exactly what we're gonna do and it's just three bolts. One, two and three. So remember, the BMW bolts are aluminum so they're not gonna stick to your magnetic uh, screwdriver or your magnetic uh, wrench. So you gotta remove it and uh, wait. Once you've undone the, bol the bolts, you can just remove the cover. And at this point, it might be a good idea to actually clean the cover itself, which is pretty filthy. So we removed those bolts with a T20 and it's now time to remove the sprocket itself, which is a 17 millimeters. So we get a 17 millimeters. We push down on the rear brake so that that doesn't slip. And then we undo it. As you're removing the bolts, you might want to note the position. So we have the bolt itself, we have a washer, and then there is a spring washer, which is nothing else than a concave bigger washer, which is in contact with the sprocket itself. So we remove them all, we put it so that we remember the order, and put it aside. At this point, I'm gonna grab a, a rag and give a clean around the sprocket. To remove the sprocket at this point, you need to loosen up the, the chain. You probably loosen up the rear wheel a million times to change tires, to adjust for the chain itself or whatever else. So this time around is no different, you get a 24 millimeters and you loosen up ah, the rear. To make it easy, I'm gonna just remove the bolt and remove the spacer. What this does will allow me to push the chain forward and I can remove the chain from the rear sprocket so that I have plenty of slack up front. At this point, the chain is loose, therefore, it should be easy, depending how old the bike is and uh, how much grime is on it, shouldn't be too hard to pull it out. In my case, it just came out as easy as, as it can. Obviously, if the bike is new, you're certain that the sprocket is a 16 teeth because it says so in the specs. But if you have a used bike, you never know what the previous owner did. And an easy way is just to take a look 
uh, the sprocket itself is going to have a number on it in this case 16 so this is a 15 teeth uh, sprocket this is from uh, uh, JT sprockets it says it's made out of carbon steel and over here it says quality Japanese steel it seems pretty well made uh, the the width of uh, the sprocket itself is uh, stock so it's well, that should be 520 so they look comparable other than this one is one tooth less and uh, it's uh, quite a bit lighter but before we put it on let's clean up around uh, the area apply a little bit of grease as long as it is resistant to high temp uh, and friction because obviously it's rotating and is attached to the engine therefore it's gonna be hot to put it on you might want to move uh, the, the chain aside sprocket in chain on the sprocket clean up the excess grease so once you're ready to install the bolt remember the concave part of the washer goes towards the inside so the edges are going to be in contact with uh, the sprocket itself and BMW uh, asks for a Loctite 243 thread lock so we're going to apply some uh, thread lock to it and put it on Back to the rear tire, we're gonna put the chain back on it and we'll worry about adjusting the chain later on. Right now, let's just put it on so that uh, I can get some resistance when I start tying the... Now that the chain is back on the sprocket in the rear, I can actually tie uh, that bolt to specs and BMW requires it to be 50 newton meters or 37 uh, pound foot of torque so let's get our uh, torque wrench in my case I want to be as accurate as possible and because this one is a digital torque wrench I can actually set it to either newton meters or foot pound and I want it to be set at 50 newton meters exactly now it's set and let's start time pressure on the rear brake here we go 50 newton meters let's move on next step is to put the cover back on in my case I just scrape it up roughly with a screwdriver I don't really care much because there's gonna be more dirt more grease going in there so uh, if, if, if I make it shiny it, it won't last therefore a quick scrub back on the bike two of the three bolts are identical so it doesn't matter which one you put where the only thing that counts is that you put the short one up top let's make sure that the chain slack is not too much and we're done because the front sprocket is smaller we have more slack than we need to so we need to pull the wheel back to reduce the slack to 35 to 45 millimeters so get a 13 millimeters or half inch and start undoing the thread of this and I'm gonna do both sides at the same time perfect now that this one is exactly where I want it to be I'm gonna tie this bolt this bolt is supposed to be tied 
to 14 foot pounds. At this point, I'm going to look at, uh, at the marks down in here and I'm going to make sure that the marks are the same on both sides. At that point, I know that the, tie, the wheel is actually straight. Once you're done and you're satisfied that the wheel is straight and the chain slack is between 35 and 45 millimeters, it's time to tie the axle nut. So this one goes to 74 pound foot of torque. And you're done. So I went out one more with a 15 teeth uh, sprocket and this is what came out of it. Now, in first gear it doesn't change that much. It only loses about one or two mile an hour. So we have 29 mile an hour. In second gear you actually lose five mile an hour. So you have 40 mile an hour. Third gear is 50 mile an hour, fourth gear is 60 mile an hour, fifth gear is 69 mile an hour, and sixth gear at 5000 RPM, you're actually cruising at 74 mile an hour. Now, this is not a big loss. It's about a loss of five mile an hour per gear. So I'm assuming top speed, you're losing just about that five mile an hour. On the zero to 60 time, you are gaining about one second. Everything considered, uh, you, you're actually one second faster, but the, the bike now with the new sprocket actually is able to lift the front wheel uh, without clutching. So just by gassing it up, the front wheel will come up and I'm pretty heavy, so it's not easy for the bike to raise the front wheel uh, with me on top. But all in all, the bike feels way better. It feels more peppy, feels like it's going way quicker. And uh, I like it quite a bit. I just went around for a while and uh, I'm liking it. The money spent for the, the sprocket were not really that much. This is the cheapest way to gain some power on, on your bike. Even better for the off-road because with a smaller front sprocket, now you're gonna be able to climb uh, harder terrain and you're gonna have a little bit more power to use in those difficult situations. Check the description down below there's gonna be links for the sprocket itself, for the torque wrench if you still don't have one and for this fantastic Alves ADV shirt. In the meantime if you like the video like, if you love the video subscribe, if you don't love the video subscribe anyway because um, doing stuff to this bike and if you own an F800GS you want me to mess up my bike before you mess up yours. Till then, dirt on and I'll see you next time.